I'm on a guided musical tour. I've asked my Facebook friends to recommend songs they assume I haven't heard, and I will do a live reaction um, as I hear these songs for the first time on YouTube. Um, and this latest request is for is from the band Smart Went Crazy. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I believe this is a, a band that I did a reaction to um, a, couple, a few weeks back, um, closer to New Year's, um, but I'm not sure. Uh, the name of the track is Con Art, and so let's dig in. Before we proceed, a note to drummers. Exhibit A as to why you shouldn't muffle your drums. Let them speak. You know, the, the, the board engineer can always subtract, but you can't add resonance uh, to drums. At least, I mean, yes, you can digitally, I suppose. Um, but these drums are wide open. The snare drum is not muffled. Um, the the drums I'm hearing aren't muffled, so let those drums speak. Um, the reason, uh, another reason you shouldn't muffle drums, especially if you're uh, if you're surrounded by amplified uh, instruments, guitars, basses, they're going to kind of muffle your drums when they're playing, right? So don't muffle those drums; they sound so good. Uh, Steve Droves of the Flaming Lips, especially in the '90s, played drums that were big and they were wide open. Um, don't muffle drums. That we don't like. We, we love the Steely Dan drummers, but we don't like the Steely Dan drummer sound. Let those drums speak. A snare drum sounds so good. My Facebook friends know me. They know I'm going to respond to cool drum parts or songs that that have a groove to them, that have a, a commanding rhythm to them. You take that drum part away from the vocals and the guitar, and it's just it's just not as impactful. Just, but ugh, I love this. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Is all I hope she, he, I hope she is going to explain how she is going to make him laugh. I mean, this, this could have come out of, this could have come straight out of the late 80s, maybe 88 to 90. It's very reminiscent of, um, it's very reminiscent of um, what was Perry Farrell's first popular band? 
I know that's a very mainstream uh, comparison, um, but it's definitely given me that vibe. This could easily be a Stephen Perkins drum part. Sorry, the drummer's obsessing over the drum part, but I'm totally, totally digging this. I wasn't expecting a cello hard double bass. If you're such a, such a badass, such a badass. Oh, God damn. This is good. So good. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. Um, again, I, I don't know when this was recorded. I don't know how many personnel are involved. I don't know if there are any, um, you know, high profile members of this band, but it's so cool. Again, it could have come straight out of the late, um, come straight out of the late eighties, uh, kind of, I don't know, post pixies, um, uh, fire hose, some really cool vibes there. And, you know, uh, my friend who recommended this song requested this song, John Houston, he, 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 he draws from a deeper well, uh, he, he draws from a deeper well of music. Uh, uh he's almost every song he has brought to my attention, um, has been one I've never heard of. Um, so I'm learning a lot, uh, from you, John, and, uh, thank you for the recommendation. Um, uh, stay well and I uh, hope to see you soon. <laughs> 